is Emmanuel Bakri. I am the general chair of the AI for Health School and the scientific director of the Health Data Hub, which is the main organization uh, organizer of this call. It's an honor for me to start this new year with you and welcome you to our second opus of this uh, AI for Health School. AI for health, why? Well, I guess that if you are with us today, you're already convinced that the potential of AI in health is really profound. AI for diagnostic ads, for precision or personalized medicine, for designing drugs, for clinical trials, for pharmacovigilance. And I mean, we could go on forever listing all the potential applications of AI for health. Of course I won't, but let me just point out what I think is one of the most important drivers of AI for health which is, I think, interdisciplinarity, bringing together healthcare professionals and researchers from different disciplines so that they can exchange ideas, work together. This is how AI will enable revolutionary applications in healthcare. So we did our best to make this cool meeting place for different disciplines and professions, mathematicians, computer scientists, physicians, ethicists, and many, many others from public institutions or private companies. We have around uh, 20 renowned plenary speakers, uh, uh, faculty members and professionals from five companies covering many disciplines. And you are over 400 participants, I mean 400 registered participants here among uh, with us today from all over the world. I think there are more than 25 countries. So it is my pleasure to open officially this AI for Health School. Uh, three days of exciting lectures uh, followed by two days of practical sessions for some of you. It has been co-organized so by the Health Data Hub and by the three artificial intelligence institutions, the one from Paris, the one from Nice, and the one from Grenoble. Uh, they all will uh, uh, speak just after me to present their institutions. First of all, of course, let me thank all the plenary speakers who have made themselves available and will present exciting lectures, but also all the practical session organizers. There are, I think there are more than 25 of them. I would like also to thank very deeply uh, the Health Data Hub team who worked really hard to make this event happen. First of all, Victoire Voisin and Fares Davion, who supervised the whole thing in close collaboration with Maud Soubele, Mathieu Stel, Julien Carré, Sophie Janaskiewicz, and Donna Salanikon. Thank you to all of you. I would like also to thank all the members of the scientific committee that have been of tremendous help in setting up the academic agenda, reviewing all the applications and moderating the lectures. And I would like to thank our partners, industrial partners for their trust and implication, uh, Janssen and Quinton Health, uh, and we have uh, Pfizer, Air Liquid, uh, Healthcare, Medtronic, I'm Jen, and I hope I'm not uh, missing anyone. Let me remind you that with the same link that we used, that you used today, you will have access to the round table on Wednesday at 5.15 p.m. It's a round table about data-driven approaches in healthcare and precision medicine, challenges and opportunities. It will be uh, with our uh, partners, uh, Johnson and Quinton Health, and Professor James Collins, Professor Kitros, and Christian Oman. So I'm done for this introduction. I will now hand over to our valued three AI institutions co-organizers so that they can give you a quick overview of their institution and their research work. Right after that, and just before the first official lecture at the school, I will tell you about the habitat. But for now, let me introduce, and thank you to her, uh, Stéphanie Alassonnière, Fellow and Deputy Director of the Paris Institute Prairie. Stéphanie, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, Emmanuel. It's a very great pleasure for me to, uh, um, to present Prairie today. So let me just share my screen. I guess you can see the, the slides now. Yes. And oh, here is it. So a brief overview of Prairie. So Prairie is the Parisian uh, Artificial Intelligence Institute, which gather three, uh, five, sorry, uh, five academic partners. Two of them are uh, university, three others are research centers. And we have industrial partners that are also 
um, supporting this uh, great adventure. We have also uh, small startups, well, small or bigger startups that joined us uh, recently uh, to be deeply uh, uh, close to the ecosystems. And we have also the chance to have the Assistant Public Hôpital de Paris uh, and INSERM, who are the two main um, uh, partners in the healthcare system around. So the research ambition and strategy is the following. We would like to gather people together, brilliant uh, researchers that will together work with the industrial partners so that the core and interdisciplinary fundamental AI research can collaborate with industrial partners and especially for these uh, medical, uh, uh, medical aspects with the hospitals. And so we would like that virtual circle to be uh, favored by the creation, well, by the dynamic of Prairie. So the main focus, of course, is science, although we have a big focus on education that I will talk about later. And the core of the Institute are the shareholders. We have uh, now 80, uh, 48 uh, chairs, and we have a lot of new young researchers that came uh, on board. We have several topics that are covered from the core research up to the applications, and the applications are most of the time related to medical uh, applications. So if I do a focus on the health uh, um, teams, we have a first group that is devoted to medical imaging, uh, targeting radiology or uh, neurodegenerative diseases, and there has been created an um, inter institute where three IA is three IA is the French name for this institute. So an inter-institute workshop on these medical imaging topics that gather together the three uh, the three groups of uh, researchers that are devoted to medical imaging in the three institutes. We have also a team working on biological imaging, uh, especially on the anapat uh, and pathologist. There is also a group for decision support systems where we both work on a, a strategy for uh, clinical exams or patient pathways. And then there is a big group on genomics, of course, which is a, a big group, uh, which is a big topics, most of them targeting oncology. And for education, uh, we have several uh, programs that are led also by uh, Paris Sciences Paris Science et Lettres in, uh, University, which is the other in, university, mine uh, being University of Paris. And the goal is really to increase the number of uh, trainings that we can have both for uh, initial training and for long life training. And we want to promote the ethical and legal issues as well so that everybody is aware of the use of uh, AI in its disciplines. We have several Master II programs, and for these Master II programs, we have the chance to have um, uh, fellowships that are uh, distributed. Uh, and these Master II are either uh, fundamental uh, AI courses, the three of them, or uh, targeting bioentrepreneurships. We have also executive master and lifelong trainees, and one of the most famous one now is the Diplôme Universitaire of Artificial Intelligence and Health at the University of Paris, where we would like to um, put the people together from very different backgrounds and work together on several uh, special topics so that uh, every aspect of each issue, of each, each use case is developed. So just to conclude, uh, I just would like to mention that uh, uh, we really think that uh, the originality and the strength of Prairie is that we bring together very top academic researchers together with the most important industrial partner in the field. Uh, we have both excellence in research and education, and we have a, a very fertile field in, of innovation in Paris, which, which enables us to have a very interesting ecosystems around us. And uh, we, of course, make some uh, improve. We would like to make some improvement, in, pre in particular, in the gender balance, which is not uh, something that uh, we 
are able to achieve yet, but uh, we would like to pay that attention. And if you want to subscribe to the newsletter, don't hesitate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. So let's move on. So then it's a pleasure for me to introduce to you to Nicola Ayash, who is the scientific director of the Interdisciplinary Institute of Artificial Intelligence of Côte d'Azur. Nicola, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let me share my screen. Does it work? Perfect. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation to present uh, our institute. Uh, I am uh, the scientific director of this uh, institute, and we are located in uh, Nice and uh, Sofia Antipolis. This is an exceptional site for research, not only because we have the ski, as you can see, and the sea, but uh, because we are in uh, the environment of Université Côte d'Azur, which is a very nice network of academic, public, and uh, industrial uh, partners. And um, our scientific program is uh, around real-world AI uh, with applications to health and smart territories. And we've splitted uh, the research along four main axes. So there is a first axis, which is a fundamental axis for AI. There are two axes related to healthcare. This is axis number two uh, related to AI for computational medicine and axis number three, AI for computational biology. And there is a fourth axis related to smart and secure territories. And uh, similarly to Prairie, the research is organized around the teams of uh, chairholders. And we have uh, currently 46 chairholders uh, dedicated to this uh, four axis of research. So I will only give uh, some information on uh, the axis related to healthcare, number two and three. And uh, for axis number two, which is AI for computational medicine, uh, the focus is really to develop uh, the e-patient, the e-medicine, and uh, based on uh, statistical, geometrical, biophysical, and semantic knowledge of the human body. We have a first focus on biophysics-based AI, where we try to learn some biophysical parameters of the so-called uh, digital twin of the patient. We have a second focus on data-driven AI, where we combine imaging with omics biomarkers, for instance, for patient selection. And we have a third uh, focus on medical data management, uh, in particular with the Health Data Hub. So all these topics uh, raise a number of uh, fundamental uh, AI issues, which are treated in collaboration with the fundamental axis of the 3 ER. You can see here uh, the names of the shareholders uh, working for this axis and the names of a number of involved companies. And uh, just as an illustration, the, the medical targets are uh, mainly cancer, but also cardiovascular and brain diseases and uh, also uh, rehabilitation of uh, disabled patients. On axis number three, AI for computational biology and bio-inspired AI, uh, the focus is really on the analysis of uh, advanced biological data with two goals. The uh, first one, which is to reveal the complex biological processes, but also a second one, to inspire innovative computational processes. And um, if we look at the first focus, uh, Enrique, I think your microphone is on. In computational biology, um, there, is, uh, there are studies from molecules to cells, tissues, and whole organs. And in bio, 
inspired AI. Uh, there is, for instance, uh, the modeling at the neuronal level of spiking models, but also the design of new uh, neuromorphic architectures. So here again, a number of fundamental issues treated in collaboration with the fundamental axes, the names of the shareholders and of some companies involved uh, in this axis. Um, just short illustrations, uh, the study of the 3D conformation of proteins, the study of cellular networks, uh, the analysis of single cell uh, genotype, and also, for instance, uh, the analysis of high resolution microscopic fluorescence uh, images, and here, uh, the design of uh, neuron hardware architecture. Here you can see the logos of some of the involved companies. And of course, if you want to know more, you can go on the website of, uh, of uh, this institute. Uh, and there are regularly uh, offers uh, for PhD students and uh, postdoc uh, students also. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Nicolas. Uh, so we'll move now to Alexandre Moreau-Gaudry, uh, who is the health director of the 3IA institution in Grenoble, which is called MIE. I, I really don't know how to pronounce it, Alexandre, but you-, you MIE. MIE, sorry. <laughs> Please, the floor is yours. Uh, up, uh, sorry, I'm trying to share my screen. This one is a good one. Yes, that's good. Everything is okay. Yes. So, Emmanuel, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present MIAI very quickly uh, with a more precise focus on what is being done in the health field. So, MIAI is an acronym for the Multidisciplinary Institute in Artificial Intelligence. And it's therefore one of the four institutes that has been labeled by the French government. It is located in Grenoble, and more precisely in the area of the Grenoble Alps University. The project is coordinated by Professor Rigossier, the former director of the Grenoble Informatics Laboratory. And uh, in this task of uh, coordination, uh, Eric is supported by a scientific committee with two representatives of the health field. My colleague uh, Emmanuel Barbier, who is a member of the Grenoble Institute of Neurosciences Gene. And uh, I'm currently uh, the director of the Team C uh, laboratory. Okay, the general objective of our institute are in line with those designed by the French government, and therefore have uh, similarities with those presented above to organize a world class uh, and interdisciplinary research network to train students. Uh, professionals in leading edge uh, AI research to propose AI solution within large companies, a small and medium sized business and startup, and to communicate and interact with the public on AI in order to facilitate its appropriation by the society, knowing its advantages and also its dangers. In Grenoble, the choice was made to organize a program in two different components. The first one is focused on next stage ER, and the second one on AI for human beings and their environment. Each uh, component is organized in different parts, and uh, you can see uh, in a bracket number that represent the number of chairs that are involved in different parts. Chairs are ambitious projects which constitute the core of a research strategy. So in the first one, we are speaking about machine learning and reasoning embedded on distributed AI and hardware architecture, perception and interaction. For the second part of this program, we have a dedicated program focused on health. Four program research are currently developed in the health field. The first two projects relate to a real life 4P medicine, that is to say a real life personalized, predictive, participatory, and preventive medicine. One who's speaking about 5P medicine or NP medicine. The deep care program is rooted with the, in the wheel to mark the synergy between artificial intelligence and care. And what we want to do is to develop new tools in order to empower everyone to act on their own health 
for this, we are going to develop with AI smart data capture, smart data fusion. And what we want to do is to evaluate their impact on health institution organization. And what also we want to do is to identify what is the best individual and social adherence model in order to promote uh, such a technology. This program is led by Professor Philippe Sankin. My colleague Jean-Louis Pépin is coordinated the chair My Way to Health, uh, and this chair is dedicated to characterizing and predicting health trajectories and anticipating the effectiveness of pharmacological or behavioral intervention. The main focus for this uh, chair is focused on a specific area, that is to say sleep apnea disorders. My colleague uh, Julien Thévenon and Thomas Berger are working on multiomics, and what they want to do is uh, to use the, the big data that are produced in the genomics, the proteomics, and imaging fields in order to develop a new machine learning methods to better predict and diagnose health conditions. And to finish, my colleague Sandrine Voros and Jocelyn Trocas are using AI in order to better assist the practitioner in the field of computer-assisted medical intervention. Okay, now from uh, an educational point of view, uh, Grenoble is an attractive area and has a world-renowned multidisciplinary academic expertise. It is recognized at the international level through an honorable, honorable ranking at the Shanghai Academic Ranking. What we have developed uh, this year, for instance, uh, 2,060 persons were trained in AI, and we develop uh, different uh, events uh, in order to promote uh, such uh, uh, learning training process. For instance, we have uh, MIAI meetings every second Thursday of each month, MIAI days, uh, seminar, and we are involved in different. Uh, uh, events such as, for instance, schools, conference, workshops, and so on. We are naturally collaborating uh, with the different companies in this field. And uh, on this slide, uh, you can see with uh, blue frame uh, the interactions with the companies that are involved in this field. Actually, we are working with 89 private partners. To complete this uh, overview of AI, do not hesitate to consult uh, our website directly, which will allow you to get a more precise idea of what MIA is. Finally, I would like to warmly thank all the people with whom I worked and who made this event possible. Whether it is the Health Data Hub team, my colleagues from other institutes, as well as my colleagues, uh, Daniel Pagonis, Jean-Marie Januel, Philippe Sanquet, and Pascal Stassini, the current president of the French IT Medical Association. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Alexandre. So I would like to end this introduction with a few words about the Health uh, Data Hub. Uh, so let me share uh, my screen. Okay, I guess you see it, yeah. Uh, so, and I would like to start by a statement, actually. Um, at the heart of AI for health, of course, there is health data. So we are very lucky in France because we have a lot of great health databases. However, even though many important research projects are already operating on some of them, these databases are, and we are a lot to think that, still largely underexploited. And I think this is something that can be said about health databases of most countries in the world. They are underexploited mainly because they are scattered all over the place. Most of them are not interoperable and the governance is different for every databases and can be, can be very, very complex. It can be a nightmare for a researcher to access some databases. So at the Health Data Hub, we seek to address these uh, problems. Practically speaking, we were created two years ago and we offer a unified governance for operating public interest research using large health databases that will be gathered in what we refer to as the Health Data Hub catalog. So to operate research on a highly secured, highly scalable, modern technological platform. And of course, the access to the data is in full compliance with applicable regulations and citizens' data privacy and confidentiality rights. And we have a mission of setting up a range of tools to bring together key stakeholders in the sector. 
As of today, we're accompanying almost 60 projects, and this number is uh, raising very, very fast. And the first version of the catalog will include more than 15 big, large databases. And of course, it will include the so-called historical SNDS, System National de Santé. This is a dual database that many other countries in the world envy us. It is not a health database, strictly speaking, since it does not have any clinical data in it, but it records all the reimbursements of the health cares of all people in France. And since we're very lucky in France because the government reimburses partially everything to everybody, basically you get records of all the health cares for more than 65 million people in this database. It is one of the biggest claims databases in the world. And the good news is that it will be linkable to most of the other databases of the catalog which include very different types of data, images, biomedical, longitudinal data, and many, many more. The other good news is that uh, the Health Data Hub, you can, you can uh, ask for accessing data of the Health Data Hub wherever you are. As long as you are uh, an academic person from a public institution, it is free of charge, and you can access the data of the Health Data Hub. Actually, we are very, very active at the international or European uh, level. We are involved in more than 10 international partnerships, and this number is growing really fast. We are organizing a lot of international events or European uh, events, including, of course, the school you are uh, attending. But not only, we also co-organized many conferences. The, the one that you organized with MIT and the French Academy for Medicine. And we organized a lot of data challenges. We organized one last year. And if you are interested, please keep posted to the news of the Health Hub because we are going to launch seven challenges in the coming year. And uh, of course, we are very, very active in the construction of the future European health data space. We took the French lead of the European health data space uh, joint action, which is called TEDAS, and we are leading a very wide consortium that is a candidate for operating the pilot of the European health data space. The goal being to build a network of nodes all over the Europe and operate impactful public interest research on European level health data. So we are very proud to announce that we have in our consortium eight national nodes. You can see at the bottom left hand side. So it's like Finland, Denmark, Norway, Belgium, Germany, Croatia, Hungary, and France along with uh, European agencies like EMA and ECDC and some European or international research infrastructures, BBMRI, uh, Orphanati, Brains, Elixir, and, 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 and some more. So if uh, you are interested, I recommend you to check regularly our website or ask to receive our newsletter to know about what we are doing or about the international events we organize. So if you have any question, if you want to subscribe to this newsletter, uh, uh, please send us an email. Uh, before moving on to the actual program of the school and to the speakers, uh, let me remind you that with the same link that you're using uh, for this uh, opening session, you will be able to participate to the roundtable on Wednesday at 5.15 p.m. Central Eastern Time on data-driven approaches in healthcare and precision medicine. And this is it, I guess, for the introduction. So now let me hand over to Philippe Sankin, who will be the moderator of this opening session. So he will be with you uh, for the whole uh, afternoon.